today I want to talk about bubbles, specifically bubbling fish, lots of carp family fish bubble, uh, some fish that aren't carp family, for instance catfish will also bubble, I've seen catfish bubbling, but it's quite common in the fishing that I do to see fish bubbling away, especially on still waters, and trying to figure out what fish they are is sometimes very difficult and sometimes very very easy so I'm going to give you a few simple pointers not going to make it there's no certainty with any of this but on the bottom there is definitely gas in the silt as the plant matter rots down and fish gulp up food the, the stuff we've the bait we've thrown in such as sweet corn or pellets or hemp and sort of filter out the food and the gas in that tends to get filtered out through their gill through their gills and the fish put up bubbles as a result some fish are, are classic bubblers tench are a good example and you tend to get lots of tiny little bubbles not massive patches fairly small patches tiny bubbles and crucians are often fairly similar probably smaller patches of bubbles but it's not unusual to get a whole load of patches of bubbles of a, of a shoal of tench feeding together and sometimes what you'll get when you hook a fish the disturbance from hooking that fish all the fish seem to send up a massive cloud of tiny bubbles so you get a whole load of patches coming up all at the same time when you've hooked a fish uh, and you'll get this as a as the tench sort of zigzags around your swim you get these patches coming up as as the hooked fish wax into the other fish bream give a, a different pattern of bubbles uh, talking about sizable bream sort of fish from a couple of pounds upwards and what you'll sometimes see in a swim is a series of lines of bubbles, each line being a foot, 15 inches, 18 inches, two foot long, all sort of going in the same direction. And it's almost like the, the shoal of bream are, are moving along the bottom of the, the lake bed and bubbling as they go along, putting up these lines of bubbles. And so that's one thing to, to watch out for. Smaller bream, skimmers can give smaller amounts of bubbles not so much in the lines but definitely some sort of patches coming up carp and i'm talking about decent sized carp here on sort of natural lakes will quite often put up quite big patches of bubbles a single carp can put up a patch of bubbles sort of three or four foot across and they really are grubbing deeply into the bottom more so than tench or crucians and they are really stirring it up and they can almost change the colour of the uh, the water above it so you can actually get coloured water if it's fairly shallow that is and uh, I had this on a water near Ringwood uh, not many years ago I couldn't remember what was in there or didn't really know what was in there in years bygone there were tench and crucians and I fed some pellets, I started fishing maggots, I started catching little perch like this. And then these couple of big patches of bubbles came up and I thought, well, it's not a little perch. I don't think it's tench. So I was fishing pretty light, sort of two and a half pound line. I put a 14 on instead of an 18 and a, a soft pellet. And it wasn't long before I found out what the culprit was. And it was a, a big carp, far too big for two and a half pound. But I did land it, it was 23 pounds. And after that, I I stepped up my tackle considerably and I got another one of uh, 24 pounds. But it was pretty obvious what those bubbles were. In between those two carp, I did get a three pound tench, but I can't remember whether that bubbled or not. I we'll just picked that up in between. So you've got these sort of different patches of bubbles and they're, they're the main ones that I've come across. Like I say, I did try fishing for catfish at Ringwood uh, about four or five years ago and 
feed in some lumps of luncheon meat in there and it wasn't long before the sort of patches and these patches moved along as the, the catfish went along the bottom gulping up the uh, pieces of luncheon meat but that's not something I'm coming across very often keeping this fairly short and sweet one or one type of bubbling I've had not very often but years and years ago I used to fish with laid on casters on slacks on the upper stour you'd get these uh, slacks especially at stour pane where you'd have a narrow run coming through and then there were uh, proper bull rushes coming up and then there was a slack with about four or five foot of water and I'd feed casters there just casters no hemp and I noticed one evening I'd be laying on with sort of double cast there were these tiny little bubbles little tiny patches of bubbles I thought I wonder what on earth they are and what it proved to be was very good dace fish around about nine or ten ounces chub around about two and a half to three pounds don't think I got roach but to my mind anyway the the uh, chub and the dace were bubbling they were grubbing around for these casters in what was quite a thin layer of silt probably only half an inch of silt one type of bubbles I'm just going to mention before I finish up in the days when I fished on the tidal froom at Wareham quite a lot the tidal range is about six foot maximum, maybe a little bit more. A lot of the tides aren't as much as six foot, it's more like three foot. And quite often you'd see shallow water close in with really hard packed gravel. And as the tide went down and it got quite low and there would only be a foot or so of water and you could see the bottom there quite clearly, no fish, bubbles would start to come up from deep in the gravel so it's obviously um, plant matter that's rotted and there's some pretty deep in that gravel be sort of black mud down there and as the water pressure became much lower that allowed the gas to escape so it was only when the tide got quite low that this gas would come out so when the tide was high there was too much water pressure stopping the bubbles from escaping down in the gravel and then as it reduced a lot this bubble these bubbles would come up now it is possible there were eels and things down deep in that gravel i don't know we we can't we couldn't see them or even little tiny elvers they might have only been as big as this but it does mean that not all bubbles are, f are fish so you will get bubbles coming up naturally and uh, I, I got this in this uh, in a session this week fishing on a, a local still water and I had fish further out but closer in because where I was fishing is where a tiny stream washes into the pond the platform I'm fishing from is set on a, a big sandbar so all the sand and the the mud has washed out over the last century has washed into the pond at that point so there's several feet of sort of fine silty sand and there's lots of trap gas in there and close in where it is pretty soft you could uh, although very close in it's compacted as you go down it's quite soft and it, it wouldn't take much if you were to stick a bank stick down there lots of gas coming up so some of it is just naturally releasing and then further out the fish were actually stirring it up as ever, I hope I've got you thinking a little bit and uh, until next time, it's goodbye for now.